What's up guys? So in this video, I'm going to break down all my settings from my recording settings to my audio settings to my keybinds, anything that you would want to know about what I use or what I'm doing to play Fortnite or even like recording my videos. It's all going to be explained in this video because I've had so many requests to be like, Beaks, like what are your settings? Like what's your res? Everything. So in this video, I'm going to break down everything, what I'm using, anything that you want to know about how I play Fortnite or just record on YouTube, export videos will all be in this video for you guys. So if you're hype about it, be sure to drop a like, and if you're new to the channel, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss out on a single video. Let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're gonna look at is my audio settings for Fortnite. Now, before we get into like explaining this, I just wanna say that these audio settings I'm using do not make footsteps louder. The only way you can really make footsteps louder are by actually increasing the volume of your headphones or whatever you're using, your TV, anything. So, like, I wanna make it clear that these audio settings will not make your footsteps louder compared to everything else. Like there's no way of actually doing that. Now these audio settings that I'm using, I feel like this is my personal opinion and I'm just sharing you guys like what my audio settings are. This is all for you guys, but, but these audio settings, in my opinion, make the footsteps in Fortnite or whatever the sounds are. They seem cleaner with like with everything around you, the gunshots, the footsteps, things just seem to sound better. That's what I'm trying to say. But there's no way of actually making your footsteps louder. It's just how clean can you make them sound. Now it depends on what type of headphones you have. I'm using Astro A50s, but this is a sound setting that I found worked really well for me personally. Pause the video if I'm moving too fast, but this is what works best for me. Basically, these are my decibel settings for each sort of uh, frequency of sound. Now when I'm listening to music, I can switch it up. And this is my music settings when listening to music. This middle one right here, I don't really use too much, um, but this is Fortnite. And this is like my music settings for when I'm just like messing around on YouTube. But um, this is what works good for me. I find that having these settings kind of increases your bass just a little bit more. And like, I'll be honest, like when I'm playing Fortnite and I have my music settings on, I can instantly notice it because everything just seems to be like a little more like meshed together, the sounds. But this audio setting for me works really well and that's about it. So that's my audio settings. I mean, there's not really much else to it. I mean, the game settings is fine. The stream port, I don't know what this does. Microphone, I don't use the, I don't use this too much. So now every single headset allows you to adjust your audio settings, but I have an Astro A50, so it does. And if you're on console and you have Astros, you can actually go into your computer, download this Astro command center firmware and adjust it. And it'll save to your base station and it'll save to your headphones memory. So you can do this on console if you really want to, but these are my settings. Feel free to copy it. Let me know down in the comments if any of you guys have adjusted them. So that's my audio settings. Let's take a look at my Fortnite settings now. All right guys, so Fortnite's loaded up now. Let's go into my settings. Um, window mode is gonna be full screen. Display resolution is gonna be, it says 1920 by 1080, but it's a stretch resolution, which is 1680 by 1080. Um, I'll go, like the reason why I play stretch is because it gives you a slight FOV boost and it also helps your frames. So that's why I play in a very slight stretch resolution. So my frame rate limit says text block, but it's at 237. And I'll go into that later into the video about why I do that. So my view distance is on Epic so I can see everything. Shadows is off. I know for you console players, you wish you could turn that off, but it's just how it is. I feel sorry for you guys. My condolences go out to console players. But anti-aliasing is on Epic. Textures, Epic, effects low. Post-processing low. V-Sync is off. Motion blur is off. Show FPS on so I can see my frames if they ever dip or anything. So if I go into my game settings now, this is my language, English. Uh, I play on NA East. My X sensitivity is 0.079. Y sensitivity is the same. Uh, ignore the controller stuff. But then my mouse and scope stuff is half of what I have up there. Um, interviews off, uh, on, off. Uh, don't know what that is. On, on, I don't play on streamer mode. HUD scale is a 0.95. It's slightly smaller than what it is. Um, toggle sprints off, sprint by default on. Just pause the video if I'm moving too fast, but I'm just gonna scroll through the rest of this. But yeah, um, that's about it. I have all my replay stuff on too, so I can record whenever I want to. So my brightness settings now is gonna be 0.45. Sound settings, I keep music pretty low. Sound effects is like this. Um, this is the rest of my stuff. So for my colorblind settings, I'm playing on Triton Nope. Please tell me I said that correctly, but uh, I play on level three. So for my input settings, I'm just gonna scroll down through this. Feel free to pause the video, but it's pretty much like this. And I use my scroll wheel for a lot of things from placing my building to firing. I have multiple edit keys. I have multiple crouch keys, but this is pretty much how it is right here. Let's 
scrolling through it. I don't really do anything too fancy with the planes and everything, but um, but yeah, this is it. And I'll go into my keyboard settings specifically with the app, and we can look at that later. So for my controller settings, I don't play on controller too much, but I am planning on going back to controller for a little bit, which I'm looking forward to. All right, so here's my keyboard settings. If you don't know already, I do play on a gamepad. The whole reason why I play on a gamepad is because I play on a really low sensitivity, so I try the tilted keyboard method where you like keep your wrists like really like sort of that sharp angle, but um, I didn't like it. It gave me wrist pain after a few weeks. I wasn't into it, so I looked into alternative options and a gamepad. I gave it a try. And I really liked it, so this is the gamepad I use. It's called the Razer Orb Weaver Chroma. And it's all pretty basic. Um, this is like one, actually no, this is the uh, inventory, no, this is my map button, sorry. So this is my map button, one, two, three, four, W, A, S, D, E, F, R, V. You get the point. And then this one right here is a rebounding key I did. Uh, it's my X key because I have this is my crouch key and this is also my crouch key my pyramid button um this is my pickaxe first weapon slot reload uh f e r -A -A. yeah you guys get it but um let's go to the side view now this is also my edit button I have two edit buttons I use E on my keyboard and then I use my thumb button I like having two edit buttons is how I play Fortnite it's always how I played Fortnite. It just is nice to have to switch it up because always spamming your index finger gets really tiring after a while and I don't like that. But this is also another crouch button I use and this is my jump button. So that's my keyboard settings. Let's go into my mouse settings now. So these are my mouse settings. I use my Logitech G502. Uh, I use the uh, auto game detection to the PC. If I go into my settings now. I have, this is my auto sprint. So like I press it if I want to just sprint and not hold W. Um, right click, left click. This right here is my fifth weapon slot. It's a score wheel, like click to the right. Score wheel click to the left is my third weapon slot. Um, this is my shotgun slot. This is unbinded. Uh, I like to keep, there's just no point in having this button bind to anything. Uh, it just isn't really in a good position. Um, I'm thinking about binding my trap still later, but I'm not sure yet. But this is my four button. This is my wall button. And this is my stairs button. If I go to my lighting now, uh, this is my lighting settings. I don't really think that really matters too much. Um, DPI is at 400. Pulling rate is at 1000. Um, don't have any of this on, please, because it gives you mouse acceleration, which is not good. Uh, I keep my surface tuning in the factory default. So this is pretty cool because it says that I press my wall a lot. So yeah, that's about it for that. So here's my Streamlab settings. I use OBS Streamlabs to record and also stream to YouTube or to Twitch or wherever, but it's my streams, Twitch, uh, you guys can't see that. So for streaming, I use uh, the NVENC, which is your graphics card to encode your stream. Um, I don't use my CPU because I only have one PC, so you should use your graphics card. But I output the re resolution to 720 by um, 1280. This is easy for people to watch streams when it's a low res. Um, because I don't have the custom stream options yet, because I'm not part of Twitch. But uh, bitrate, this is all pretty much, I don't know what this does, but this is what you should be doing, I think. For recording, um, the recording path, and then the MP4 format, I use the NVENC to also record uh, my gameplay, which is a graphics card, uh, CBR. I use 45,000 bitrate um, when I'm recording. Um, this is basically other stuff that I use, and then audio tracks all at um, 160 bitrate. So for my video, I use this. Uh, I'm not gonna pronounce it because I'm gonna say it wrong. But I'll try to say it. Uh, Lan Lanxos, L Lan Lansk Zos, I think. But um, 60 FPS. Um, hotkeys don't do that. Advanced. I don't even touch any of this stuff. Um, I don't need it. But uh, yeah, that's uh, that's about it for that. So how I export videos is I use Premiere Pro. Um, got a file. Let's say export media, right? And this is my export settings. So I use uh, H.264, H.264, um, the preset I use, I called it YouTube Mofo. But um, this is the preset I use. It's, uh, it'll tell you like all the stuff. Um, so for the effects, there's not really too much specifically. I didn't touch any of that stuff. But for the video, um, 
I go through this really, really slowly. But I think the one thing I changed was make sure you have this checked. And then this is, I looked online, some guys said to do it this way. And then, yeah. And then use maximum render quality, audio. Um, so I use my audio. Don't know what that is. And then, yeah, that's about it. And it tells you like how big your file is going to be and stuff. So then here's my NVIDIA settings that I have set up. I'm just going to scroll through it. And I think that covers about it, guys. So, yeah. So here's what you guys have been waiting for. This is why I cap my FPS at 237. I'm going to try to explain it as best I can as to why I do this. But this website called Blur Busters, I'll leave a link down in the description below if you guys want to go check it out. But it basically tells you everything you need to know about G-Sync and V-Sync and what the optimal settings are for your computer and your refresh rate. So if I go over to the G-Sync versus V-Sync uh, with FPS limit, basically what this is talking about is the difference between having G-Sync off. So this is G-Sync off right here. Let me move my camera down a little bit. So this is G-Sync off right here, like just your refresh rate, no G-Sync, no V-Sync. This is G-Sync with V-Sync off. And then this is G-Sync plus V-Sync. And all these have the same FPS limit. This is 238 by 237 to just be safe. So the whole reason about why I cap my FPS at 237 is because I have V-Sync on in my NVIDIA control panel. And when you cap your FPS at 240, when you have V-Sync on in your NVIDIA control panel, it gives you some input lag. As you can see, the average input lag was 28 milliseconds but then when you bring it down to like 237 238 it goes down to 19 milliseconds and that's about a 10 millisecond difference which is what you would want because you want to have less input lag so all these bars represent the input lag of having g-sync and v-sync off g-sync on v-sync off g-sync plus v-sync and as you can see it's all the same there's no input lag when you have v-sync on in your nvidia settings do not have vsync on in your Fortnite settings, that will give you input lag. But if you have vsync on in your NVIDIA settings with G-Sync on, then you will have no input lag and your screen looks a lot more cleaner, in my opinion. But that's why I cap my FPS at 237. Please go check out this website. I'll leave a link in the description below. It explains everything you need to know about G-Sync, vsync, and what the best settings are for your FPS and your refresh rate. Everything you need to know will be in this website. Please go check it out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Bye, I'm out. I'll see you guys later.